Welcome, welcome. Um, so I'm pretty sure all of you know now, because a lot of times people didn't know in the past, the data center is now in Los Angeles, working at a Kiwa office in Koreatown. We've been here about two years, and it's been really amazing to work more locally and with the organizations. A lot of you who are here, and it's great to see all your faces. Um, and we made the Oakland people come to LA. <laughs> So some of you know that I produced this show on KPFK with Riku Matsuda, who I was hoping would come by. But as soon as Riku went on, this guy calls and he's like, what is this? This street talking person? This isn't intelligent. It's street talking. It's street talking. Get this person off the show. KPFK listeners are intelligent. And I was like, you know, actually a lot of young people listen. It's like a different way of communicating. It's a different way of telling. And he was just totally yelling. And I was like, you know what? That's exactly what we're trying to say. Like we tell our stories in our own words and in our own ways. And it's like, it doesn't have to be academic language to be legitimate, you know? Like we've been telling stories to each other for all these years. And what Data Center tries to do is bring that together and make it legitimate and make it valued. So with that note, I introduce Eileen Ma, campaign director. Is that your position? Yeah. <laughs> Koreatown Immigrant Workers Alliance. Yeah. I know there are many, many people who can probably share wonderful stories about how uh, valuable the work has been with their work has been with Data Center. But I thought I could share just a, a couple of different ways in which I think um, Data Center is different from you know some of the other organizations that we've tried to collaborate on research with, or it's different from some other academic institutions that we've tried to do research with. Um, for Kiwa, um, so that that report reclaiming Koreatown, that green report, if maybe Preeti could hold it up, would not have happened without Saba's help, I think, um, and without really the expertise and analysis of data center. Because I think that we were sitting there with a lot of data from some surveys that we had done and with some information that we had collected, but we really didn't know what to do with it. And I think it really took a few, actually many, many conversations with Saba and, and looking at the data in different kinds of ways to learn how we could produce a report that could then serve our organizing. And that really is forming the basis for our work in Koreatown to try and stop gentrification and fight for affordable housing and equitable development. The word is out in San Francisco, in San Francisco Bay Area that organizing is actually a lot is doing a lot more in LA than in San Francisco, building a local movement. And I'm, I'm interested in coming down and finding out more about how you do what you do and what we can learn in the Bay Area from you. A lot of the information that is needed in creating change here resides within the community. It's not in the government, it's not in the, uh, in the academic institutions, it's not in the media but it resides within the knowledge of the people who live in these communities. And that's where uh, I think a lot of the most recent and most exciting development in the data center has come about in helping develop that methodology. I just, what we're trying to do now is to create a network of uh, organizers and research, a network of researchers who are working in organizing all over the country uh, that can uh, help uh, build the research infrastructure of the movement and both in terms of methodology in terms of resources that are available in terms of getting people together to know each other and Miho and Saba have been leading that effort uh, meeting with organizations across the country uh, meeting with academic institutions and creating uh, what uh, we call social justice uh, research I mean research justice Ultimately, in order for um, grassroots community sector to be um, on level playing field with other uh, uh, institutional sectors in society, we have to have equitable access to information um, in par with institutions. And we also have to have the power to be able to define what is legitimate knowledge and what is not legitimate knowledge on par with other institutions. Where we come from, we have our community's indigenous methods of, you know, generating important knowledge that you know teaches us who we are and a way of passing it on to the next generation but suddenly like when we started talking about research none of that what we knew experientially and culturally as peoples became relevant and so we said okay research justice actually um, is going to be the term that really embraces this change agenda where it's a paradigm shift and it's also kind of an ongoing process where um, 
you know, those of us from communities of color or different, you know, communities, indigenous communities, low-income communities, um, will come together as, like, genuinely as experts that already are research experts to the table and say, okay, how are we going to define research and how are we going to be, um, you know, developing the tools that work for us and uh, continue to apply those tools in a real way that kind of builds political power. Because right now, you know, there's a lot of cultural power and maybe social power behind the kind of methods that we already know through our day-to-day -day experiences, but that doesn't often translate to political power, and that's the gap that we want to help fill, to create a space for this critical thinking, you know, on a larger systemic um, level, you know, um, that is also grounded in uh, grassroots organizing to, to make that change happen. And so we're calling it the research justice strategy for the next five years. So it's a start and it requires all of us, you know, here and beyond to actually, I think, you know, make the fruit of that our own. So, yeah, look forward to working with you on that. Thank you.